In this video, we will be taking a look at how to download the SSL VPN client for our Sophos XG firewall. The SSL VPN client can only be downloaded from the user portal, and the option to do so only appears when an SSL VPN policy has been created and the user logging in has access to that policy. I'm going to log in to the user portal for my XG firewall. Of the options on the left-hand navigation bar, you will see one labeled Download Client. As I click here, the clients available for download are for authentication and SPX for email encryption, but none of the options you see are for SSL VPN. Now I'm going to switch over to the firewall management interface to create an SSL VPN policy and add users to that policy. To create the policy, we're going to click on VPN in the configure section of the navigation bar and then on the SSL VPN remote access option across the top. Click on the add button. We're going to fill in the name for the policy and a description if you like. Next, we click on Add New Item in the Policy Members section to define who will have access to this policy. As you can see here, groups can be added or individual users. I'm going to add two users that I have defined and then click Apply. In the Tunnel Access section, the first option you see here is if you want this policy connection to act as the default gateway. What this option is asking you is if you want this tunnel to be a split mode, where only traffic destined for a network resource behind the firewall goes down the SSL VPN tunnel. All of the traffic for the user, like web surfing, is done locally. Turning this option on would cause this tunnel to be forward all, which means all traffic generated by the user would go down the SSL VPN tunnel. The next two boxes are what resources are you going to allow them to have access to on the network. For this video, I'm going to select all of the IPv4 resources and then apply. If you'd like to change the default idle timeout options, you can do that here. Otherwise, we're going to click on Apply and then OK to confirm. The next two things we're going to do is to make sure that SSL VPN access is turned on for each zone as well as create a firewall access rule. So we're going to click on Administration, device access, then we're going to make sure that SSL VPN is turned on for each zone that we want SSL VPN to have access to. Now let's create a firewall access rule. We're going to click on firewall, then add firewall rule, add a firewall rule name, then for zone we're going to select VPN, for destination zone we're going to add LAN, we're going to uncheck match known users, we're going to scan HTTP and FTP traffic, we're going to do general policy for intrusion prevention and then for web policy and for application control, allow all. We're going to then check the log filter traffic and then click save. Now I'm going to log back into the user portal. As you can see here, SSL VPN has been added as an option to the left hand navigation bar. A user would now be able to download the Windows client with configuration settings already included or they can download configuration settings to be used with other third-party clients. I'm now going to click to install the SSL VPN client. Typically when you install a client you need to configure user settings that tells the client where to connect and how to connect. If you remember what I said earlier, when I went to download the SSL VPN client as it was displayed on the screen, the download was for both the client and configuration settings for Windows. I'm going to start the SSL VPN client and in the system tray in the lower right hand portion of the screen, I'm going to double click on the SSL VPN client that looks like a traffic signal. That now brings up my credentials screen. I enter my username and my password. There's nothing else for me to enter, just my username and my password. You can see my confirmation of successful connection along with the IP address assigned to my SSL VPN client. In the system tray, I'm going to double click one more time on the SSL VPN client to bring up the status window. You can see all the exchanges that happened between my adapter and the firewall. Now I'm going to click on disconnect. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you found it helpful.